What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we're gonna get back to the E91M3 and uh, hopefully try to drop the whole rear end. We're talking fuel tank, we're talking all the lines, we're talking also the whole rear suspension and everything, and possibly even move it over to the E91 and actually get all that stuff assembled in today's video. Now obviously, I don't know if I'm gonna do it in today, but in the next couple of days in this one video, so wish me luck. I'm not gonna lie, a build like this is actually very overwhelming and there's a lot of times I don't really wanna go out and even get started because there's so much to do. But end of the day, when we have an E91 M3, I know it's all gonna be worth it. So, without further ado, guys, we ended up picking up this little bad boy, which is gonna be helping us with our build. This guy, believe it or not, actually talks to us. I mean, just, ch oh, oh, it's saying something. Let's finish this, what, what does that say? Let's finish this build. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about guys. Yes, this is a label printer. Basically guys, I went ahead and picked this bad boy up so we can go ahead and label the entire harness when we're unplugging things, just so we can kind of remember where to put everything back. So yeah, we're gonna be taking this bad boy with us and it's actually connects Bluetooth to our phone, so it's gonna be super easy and convenient. Also picked up this little guy so it can actually help us in the tighter areas. The other one I was having some issues with, the big M18, so I went ahead and picked up an M12 Milwaukee. I was actually thinking about doing some Milwaukee giveaways just because of how much I love Milwaukee and I know Black Friday's coming up, so I'm gonna be copping some more tools for myself and I'm thinking about giving some tools out to you guys. So let me know down below if that's a giveaway idea you guys would be interested in. I just feel like not everyone has a particular car for like a carbon fiber spoiler. And if I wanna give out something, you know, a gift card's kinda lame, cash, lame. But I'm pretty sure if you guys are watching this video, you guys are handy people and uh, who doesn't like Milwaukee? So smash that like button if you guys like the idea and make sure you let me know down below if you guys like that idea. Without further ado, let's go ahead and head in the backyard and just start taking things apart. So we just jacked it up, put the rears on some jack stands, but we noticed that pretty much when I started to release the jack, the whole car started tilting over this way, and these are not even sitting on the jacks anymore. Literally, we moved all the weight on the front end, so I think what we have to do is actually leave the jack there, and honestly, we have to take apart everything in terms of the rear suspension, even the fuel tank, so we can kind of just even out the weight on this chassis, and I think we need to make sure on that car, when we actually install something, we need to make sure the other side is being weighed down properly as well. So I think our main focus on the E91 right now is getting the full suspension suspension on the car and all the lines and everything on the undercarriage. I think we want to focus on the undercarriage first before we actually focus on the interior wiring or anything like that just because I don't want the car falling over and as long as it falls over on some wheels we are gravy in the navy. So yeah guys first things first uh, let's go ahead and take off both wheels and then <laughs> yeah just start disconnecting everything and labeling everything. <laughs> Guys, so I was trying to avoid removing all this stuff in the rear, uh, but I think we actually have to get all this stuff out of here. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and throw this all in the shed. So just so we have some space to actually move around back there and actually release some cables. Uh, so uh, yeah, I guess uh, it's cleanup mode.
after all of that prepping, guys, I think it's finally time to start actually disconnecting everything off that rear subframe and the brake lines. So we do brake lines, connectors, and then we can drop the subframe. I just really want to see the subframe come out because once it comes out, we're going to try to also remove the fuel tank and then transfer those two things over. So not only do we make a lot of progress in the interior of the car, literally strip the full interior and removing the subframe and fuel tank off the E90 M3, but we're also hopefully going to be transferring it over to the E91 M3. And we're actually making a lot of progress for one day. So uh, I might actually drop this video sooner rather than later so you guys will get more content sooner. I mean, trying to make my videos more jam-packed. If I can make them more jam-packed, then honestly, I will upload more than once a week. But normally, they're not jam-packed, so I try to upload at least once a week a jam-packed video. So it does look like today's gonna be a jam-packed day. So you guys are about to get a video sooner rather than later. <laughs> Now, the next thing I want to go ahead and remove is the fuel tank. Once we actually get this fuel tank out, all these lines that you guys see that's running on top of the fuel tank, we can go ahead and remove all of those, transfer that onto the E91, and then eventually put the fuel tank and then put in the rear suspension. Like I said earlier, the goal is in this video is to get all that done. So literally the undercarriage of the whole rear end is 100% complete. This does look a lot different than the E91. So there might be a few things that we're going to have to modify. Of course, I'll show you guys everything that needs to be done. But without further ado, let's go ahead and try to remove this fuel tank. Guys, everything I'm doing on my own, uh, do not do by yourself if you end up doing the same thing. Dropping a fuel tank on yourself is kind of sketchy. This thing was actually full of gas. You guys ever go to the gas station, fill up your cars and literally leave and you feel like a car is heavier? Um, that's how much of a difference <laughs> it makes. So this thing almost feels like a full tank of gas. Um, I'm actually gonna try to figure out a way to cover this up to make sure that nothing actually gets into the fuel tank. And then once I actually get this thing covered up, honestly guys, at this point, we can start going ahead and removing all these lines and start transferring literally everything on this undercarriage to the M three. That is very exciting stuff. I'm actually going to probably go take a little food break. So I'm going to go ahead and cover this up, wash my hands, take a little food break, and then we'll come back and we'll try to move all these lines. I'm honestly very, very excited. And guys, after that meal, I think it's finally time to we can finally actually remove all these lines, the DMTL pump, all the brake lines, um, all this stuff over here, brackets, things like that. All this stuff you guys see right back here, we're going to go ahead and swap over all the lines that go to the front of the car right over there, all these lines, everything you guys see, even to the fuel tanks, we're going to be transferring over, which is very exciting stuff. Now, hopefully, again, things end up mounting properly because if they don't, um, we're going to have to do a lot of uh, customization. So now that we finally installed the DMTL pump lines and routed all of that, now we actually have all the brake lines and uh, all of these lines. So um, honestly, I don't think this is gonna mount properly, like 100% OEM from that to that, just because uh, there's a lot of M3 dedicated like rivets on that car compared to this car. Uh, but from what I know, the only major thing you have to do is the transmission tunnel, the rest of the things to kind of just make it work. That being said, uh, we did remove this entire piece. I kept it all one piece intact. So let's go ahead and just try to get this thing mounted on the side of the car. And uh, let's just hopefully try to get this as OEM as possible.
And after a little bit of test fitting, we got pretty much all this stuff connected. So we finally have the brake lines connected to the top up there. Um, both of them are right over here. Both of these are sticking out right here and that is sticking out right there. Those are absolutely perfect. We ended up putting a screw. I'm probably gonna end up replacing this screw with another screw. But basically this didn't have anywhere to get mounted. I'm gonna go ahead and probably put like a black screw behind this. But yeah, this had nothing to actually get mounted to. Um, this one actually got mounted right there, which was perfect. That one had a good mounting point as well. And as you guys can see, all this stuff ended up getting mounted to the bracket that's right over here that we ended up fabricating as well that's why i had to fabricate this bracket because this is very 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 important all that being said all this stuff has been situated which i'm super happy about i actually added this ac line by the way i did this kind of off camera that bracket's perfect that bracket over here is perfect and that bracket over here is perfect and then this pretty much just gets bolted up right over here now as far as this stuff right over here um this is supposed to get mounted over here i don't really know the best way there's supposed to be one of these back here for this to get mounted to um so if any of you guys know a good way to get this to get mounted properly that would be nice because that's not the only one um all the ones down there don't mount to anything so uh yeah i need to figure out a good mounting source maybe we could drill a hole straight through and then possibly just end up putting a washer in a nut i might just end up doing that unless there is another way let me know down below guys now when we come around back here this is where it ends up being beautiful this mounting bracket ended up lining up perfectly on um, the brake lines ended up lining up perfectly all that this entire line over here to the dmtl pump ended up being perfect and everything over here ended up being perfect so we relocated our dmtl pump so we're able to do a quad exhaust oem m3 setup which is perfect guys you ended up putting the heat shielding as well and that lined up absolutely perfect and we also ended up putting like a plastic rivet right over here to hold this on because uh there was no mounting point over here plastic rivets work for these things actually coming to think about it plastic rivets might actually work for those as well if we drill a hole to put a plastic rivet that actually might work we might end up doing that again let me know down below if you guys have any experience with that kind of stuff maybe one of you guys have a better idea I'm just gonna leave that but it got mounted over here perfectly that goes to the fuel tank and then all these was actually I, I was able to screw it in because the factory ones on this car also come on this side so that's perfect that got screwed in the one up here got screwed in so that was absolutely perfect so yeah in terms of this back area um, we're pretty much ready to go again honestly probably install the fuel tank and uh, that's what I'm probably gonna end up doing right now guys we have the m3 fuel tank in the e91 m3 now <laughs> now we can technically call this thing an m3 because we have m3 stuff going into it literally it says e90x m3 fuel tank right there so everything we're gonna be putting in from here on out even the suspension completely is going to be only m3 exclusive parts even with all the lines and everything the dmtl pump again my two questions are for the lines how to mount that properly i'll probably figure it out by the next video myself but if you guys have any uh you know ideas let me know and then also i noticed for the exhaust there's no actual uh screw holes right over here so how am i supposed to mount the exhaust i have no idea i'm gonna have to do some more research on that maybe we'll have to do some welding involved that probably might have to be the case we'll see we'll see but as for now we do have the fuel tank fully mounted looking absolutely beautiful um hopefully tomorrow i'm gonna install the full m suspension on there i think it's gonna look super sick i'm super excited for this bad boy but while we're up over here we can actually start connecting some of the lines uh so that's our first connection check that out guys and here is our second connection that is pretty awesome i'm not gonna lie and then we got this one right over here let's go ahead and just connect that real quick bada bing bada bang i am one happy man by the way guys i know a lot of you guys are like nor why aren't you cleaning everything as you're installing it my hands are dirty i'm installing dirty things it's honestly gonna be such a pain to clean things install it get dirty and then i'm gonna put dirt on the new part so my idea is i'm gonna go ahead and install everything that, that has to do mechanically with this car suspension mechanically and then once everything is sorted I'm gonna go ahead and power wash the car from the undercarriage, probably scrub it all down. Um, this section as well, I'm actually gonna spray in a bunch of cleaner and actually clean this entire area before actually getting all this stuff covered up. Again, guys, do not worry. I'm not cutting corners whatsoever on this build. I want this baby to be the cleanest, cleanest E91 M3 out there. And it does mean I got to spend a lot of time on it, which we are doing. So anyways, I'll probably catch you guys tomorrow morning. I am very tired. I need to take a break. The sun is hating me straight on. So yeah, I'll see you guys uh, tomorrow morning. 
And guys, a few days later, we are back in the backyard with not only our first E90 M3, but you guys know that we also picked up another E90 M3. If you guys missed the last video, we ended up picking up a supercharged E90 M3 with possible engine issues, possibly resavable. We'll have to find out on that in an upcoming video. I did notice the actual crack. Um, it doesn't seem like something that can't be fixed quite easily. I'm just wondering if that's the only damage to the engine and does the engine actually turn over? So we're probably gonna be trying to get that car to turn over in the near future. But as for now, as you guys know, before we actually got that car, we put the fuel tank in, we put in all the lines. We got the DMTL pump connected. We got all these connections on the top connected. It looks so, so, so good. That's the first progress we have done to the build. So as of this point, I wanna drop in the rear subframe into this car. To be honest with you guys, um, I don't really know how I'm gonna do this uh, with one person. I think I'm gonna go ahead and connect the quick jacks, lower the quick jacks a little bit, and then try to jack this up because it can only jack this up so much. This thing is pretty heavy and I feel like it's just gonna go all over the place. So we're gonna just try our absolute best. I know some of you guys told me to replace my bushings and uh, honestly, the bushings don't look great, but they don't look bad either. They look, definitely look like they can get another 100,000 miles out of them. So I'm not really tripping. I'm not gonna lie guys, every single piece that we got off this car so far, fingers crossed, has been in immaculate condition. And from the interior to the exterior, honestly, whoever that owned this car took very good care of it. And they just put on little tasteful modifications, no tunes or anything like that. Literally couldn't even find a single oil leak on this motor, but we're definitely gonna be doing all the gaskets as well. But without further ado guys, I'm gonna go ahead and install all the drivetrain bolts right here. So I don't have to do it underneath the car. And then we're gonna try to slide this thing underneath there and possibly lower it, like I said, and just try to make it work. Fingers crossed we can get this in quite easily because that's gonna be so exciting. We can actually get the first part of the suspension, some first wheels onto this wagon. So it's not only gonna be a chassis, it's gonna be a rolling chassis. And just like that, guys, we finally have the rear subframe and the M suspension, guys. We got the M logos literally on everything. We have it on the springs, we have it on the shocks, we have it on the rotors, we have it on the control arms. I think it's, <laughs> not to mention, look at that M3 rear differential cool. That just looks so, so, so sick. Yes, yeah, so we finally have everything sorted in terms of the rear. Now, obviously, we do have some sensors we need to hook up. We need to actually mount that shock. Um, probably a few of the little things. Oh yeah, like the brake lines and things like that. All easy easy stuff all the major things honestly getting that fuel tank in getting this rear suspension in thank the lord that is all in the car which i'm super happy about now i don't actually want to raise this car anymore right now because if we raise it all the weight is in the rear we need to actually move that engine and transmission off of that subframe move that subframe with the suspension to the front of the car get that stuff mounted to the front so we can actually lift this up and the weight distribution is perfect plus we can actually put some wheels so finally this thing will be a rolling chassis which is exactly what we're looking for plus if we actually get the engine off of that we'll be finally be able to do all the gas skits while the engine is off but yeah without further ado guys i'm actually gonna go ahead and just plug up a couple more things in terms of like you know the brake lines the ones we already disconnected that i pretty much showed you guys twice that i disconnected and then honestly probably just do a little bit of cable management but other than that guys i think this is a very successful video we got the m3 fuel tank the m3 rear suspension the m3 dmtl pump relocation for the quad exhaust exit check that out guys so I found out to actually get an M3 muffler mounted. I'm actually gonna have to de-weld the brackets on that and reroute it on this guy. It's just like four little brackets. It shouldn't be too hard to de-weld and then reroute it on that and weld it on this. So that's stuff that we're gonna have to do to be able to get the M3 muffler mounted, like an OEM mount. We could just get it welded up, but end of the day, if we can get as much OEM stuff possible, we might as well. Especially if we have a donor car, we have the stuff. Why not just get the work done, especially since we're going 110% on this build. If you guys are enjoying the direction we're going with this E91 M3, make sure to smash the like button. You guys know that we ended up picking up a supercharger for this bad boy. I'm not gonna install it in the process of actually getting everything on the car. Um, when we actually get everything on the car, I think I'm gonna put it all back to stock so we can actually get it past all the legal inspections, get a proper smog sticker. So this is a legal E91 M3, that is my goal. And then after that, we could probably add a supercharger. And the supercharger is only gonna be on the car when we're on racetracks. It's never gonna be on the car on public road. Now, in a practicality standpoint, that, look, that sounds kind of insane, but in a, uh, 
kind of standpoint, you guys know what I mean. So without further ado, guys, that is going to have to conclude this video. Let me know if the next video, you guys want me to start putting on the suspension on the front on the disc car or actually start working on the M3 we have over there, remove the supercharger and possibly actually start working on the interior. Um, we need to actually get the wiring harness out of this car. And to be able to do that, we had to pretty much remove all the suspension, which we pretty much did. We disconnected everything, including the fuel tank. But what you also have to do is actually remove this headliner. This is a perfect black headliner that I was actually going to sell. But thank the Lord that I didn't already because our E90 M3 over there, because we're actually restoring the E90 M3, um, it actually has the headliners completely sagging. Um, all the dome lights and everything is glued on. So we're actually going to be reusing this whole section onto that E90 M3. So that just works out because I don't need any of that stuff for the wagon. None of that stuff actually fits. So that is a big plus, a huge bonus, and it's definitely going to be helping us out on that. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this headliner, um, access all the wiring, swap the headliner onto that car, and then move the wiring onto this car. It's literally killing two birds with one stone, guys. This M3 donor car is going to help us save an E90 M3 and build an E91 M3. How sick is that? I'm actually going to be releasing some Save a BMW plates in the near future. Um, I know I did one launch of Save a BMW plates, and they sold out within like literally a week. So I'm going to be launching like two different designs, uh, probably like 90 of each design. So it's not going to be too many. And again, if you guys want to cop them, make sure to stay tuned to upcoming videos because once I release them, um, they literally sell out in like a, a day. I think the last one is in like a day or two, maybe. And for those of you guys who just want to get our OG keychains, we have a bunch of keychains linked down in the description in nattyperformance.com. Save a BMW style. Make sure to check out that link down below. I know a lot of you guys are saving BMWs as well and having that keychain on there just tells the world and your friends like, yo, I'm on a mission. So without further ado, guys, I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.